भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो टुडे वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो टेन कैंटो टेन द समम बोनम चैप्टर सिक्सटी थ्री लॉर्ड कृष्णा फाइट्स विथ बानासूर वर्स नंबर थर्टी एट टेन पॉइंट सिक्सटी थ्री पॉइंट थर्टी एट एक आद्य पुरुषो अद्वित्य तूर्य स्वदीर्घ हेतुर अहेतुर ईश प्रतीयसे अथापि यथा विकारम स्वयया सर्वगुण प्रसिद्ध ताद्यपुरुष तूर्य स्वदर्ग हेतुरहेतुरीश प्रतीयसे यथा यथा विकारम स्वमाया सर्वगुण प्रसिद्ध तमेकाद्यापुरुषोद्वितीय तुर्य स्वदर्ग हेतुरहेतुरीश प्रतीयसे यथा यथा विकार स्वयया सर्वगुण प्रसिद्ध प्लीज रिसाइट पुरुषो अद्वितीय तुर्य स्वदीर्घ हेतु हेतुरीश तीयसे अथा यथा विकार पुरुषो अद्वितीय तूर्य स्वदर्घे तो रहे तुर्यथा यथा विकार सुमाया सर्वगुण प्रसिद्ध माता जी तमेक आद्या पुरुषोद्वितीय 
तुरिया स्वदर्ग है तो रहे तुरीशा प्रतीयसे अथापि यथा विकारम स्वमाया सर्वगुण प्रसिद्ध त्वम यु एक वन आद्य ओरिजिनल पुरुष सुप्रीम पर्सन अद्वितीय विदाउट अ सेकेंड तूर्य ट्रांसेंडेंटल स्वधृक सेल्फ मैनिफेस्टिंग हेतु द कॉज अहेतु हैविंग नो कॉज ईशा द सुप्रीम कंट्रोलर प्रति यसे यू आर परसीव्ड अथा अपि नंदलेस यथा अकॉर्डिंग टू विकारम वेरियस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन स्व बाय योर ओन माया इलूजरी पोटेंसी सर्व ऑफ ऑल गुण मटेरियल क्वालिटी प्रसिद्ध फॉर द कंप्लीट मैनिफेस्टेशन ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपोर्ट बाय द डिसाइपल्स ऑफ शील प्रभुपाद ट्रांसलेशन You are the original person, one without a second, transcendental and self-manifesting. Uncaused, you are the cause of all, and you are the ultimate controller. You are nonetheless perceived in terms of the transformations of matter affected by your illusory energy. transformations you sanction so that the various material qualities can fully manifest purport the acharyas comment as follows on this verse shrila shridhar swami explains that the tam adhya purusha the original purusha indicates that lord krishna expands himself as mahavishnu the first of the three purushas who take charge of cosmic manifestation the lord is ek advitiya one without a second because there is no one equal to the lord or different from him no one is completely equal to the supreme godhead and yet because all the living beings are expansions of the potency of godhead no one is qualitatively different from him shri chaitanya mahaprabhu nicely explains this inconceivable situation by stating that the absolute truth and the living beings are qualitatively one but quantitatively different the absolute possesses infinite spiritual consciousness whereas the living beings possess infinitesimal consciousness which is subject to being covered by illusion shila jeeva goswami commenting on the term adya purusha quotes from the satvata tantra vishnu stu trini rupani there are three forms of vishnu for cosmic manifestation etc Shri Jeeva Goswami also quotes a statement of the Lord's form from Shruti Purvam evaham ihasam In the beginning I alone existed in this world This statement describes the form of the Lord called the Purusha avatar who exists before the cosmic manifestation Shri Jeeva Goswami also quotes the following Shruti mantra Tat Purushasya Purushatvam which means such constitutes the lord's status as purusha 
Actually, Lord Krishna is the essence of the Purusha incarnation because he is Turiya, as described in the present verse. Jiva Goswami explains the term Turiya, literally the fourth, by quoting Sridhar Swami's commentary to the Bhagavatam verse 11.15.16. Virat Hiranya Garbascha Karanam Cheti Upadhyaya Ishasya Yatri Bhirhinam Turiyam Tad Vidur Buddha. The Lord's universal form, His Hiranya Garbha form, and the primeval causal manifestation of material nature are all relative conceptions. But because the Lord Himself is not covered by these three, intelligent authorities call Him the fourth. According to Shla Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, the word Turiya indicates that the Lord is the fourth member of the quadruple expansion of Godhead called the Chatur view. In other words, Lord Krishna is Vasudev. Lord Krishna is Swadark, that is, He alone can perceive Himself perfectly. Because His infinite spiritual existence, infinitely pure, His Hetu, the cause of everything, and yet He is a Hetu, without cause. Therefore, He is Ish, the Supreme Controller. The last two lines of this verse are of special philosophical significance. Why is the Lord perceived differently by different persons, although He is one? A partial explanation is given here. By the agency of Maya, the Lord's external potency, material nature, is in a constant state of transformation, vikara. In one sense, then, material nature is unreal, asat. But because God is the supreme reality and because He is present within all things and all things are His potency, material objects and energies possess a degree of reality. Therefore, some people see one aspect of material energy and think this is reality while other people see a different aspect of material energy and think, no, that is reality. Being conditioned souls, we are covered by different configurations of material nature. And thus we describe the Supreme Truth or the Supreme Lord in terms of our corrupted vision. Yet even the covering qualities of material nature such as our conditioned intelligence, mind and senses are real, being the potency of the Supreme Lord. And therefore, through all things, we can perceive in a more and less subjective way the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is why the present verse states, Prati Yase, you are perceived. Furthermore, Without the manifestation of material nature's covering qualities, the creation could not fulfill its purpose, namely to allow the conditioned souls to make their best attempt to enjoy without God, so that they will finally understand the futility of such an illusory notion. Om Agyanti Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine 
निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिने जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो टेन चैप्टर सिक्सटी थ्री वर्स नंबर थर्टी एट ट्रांसलेशन यू आर द ओरिजिनल पर्सन वन विदाउट अ सेकेंड ट्रांसेंडेंटल एंड सेल्फ मैनिफेस्टिंग अनकॉस्ड यू आर द कॉज ऑफ ऑल एंड यू आर द अल्टीमेट कंट्रोलर You are nonetheless perceived in terms of the transformations of matter affected by your illusory energy. Transformations you sanction so that the various material qualities can fully manifest. Hare Krishna. So we are. reading very interesting section of shrimad bhagavatam wherein between the the battle between banasur and krishna lord shiva comes and takes side of banasur vaishnava naam yatha shambhu the greatest vaishnav the greatest devotee he comes and takes side of banasu why why he goes against krishna some of us are great even those who are not great they will not go against krishna because they have that understanding that is supreme personality of godhead i should not go against him what about great souls they will not commit offense of going against krishna and that to against for a violent fight to kill not just voting against krishna i am voting a violent fight to kill and kill with what the highest weapon to kill the enemy seems lord shiva doesn't matches but he does it because he promised banasu that i will protect you and he cannot go back from his promise so i will protect you but who knew krishna will be enemy of banasur and shiva will have to protect but he has to fulfill his promise that is demigods or such masters who are not your well wishers who just sentimentally support you so demigods instead of lord shiva explaining to banasu don't fight with krishna he is my boss surrender to him so okay you fight i am there is like a terrorist if he goes to rto and is a indian citizen 18 years above and demonstrates how to drive a car the rto will have to give him a license even if he knows he is going to take this car and kill somebody he can't say no you cannot get license no he is 18 years above he is indian citizen he knows how to drive car 
रूल्स आर मेट कार दे दो डेमी गॉड्स आर लाइक दैट यू डू कर्म कांड से ओके आशीर्वाद कृष्णा इज नॉट लाइक दैट यू डू एवरीथिंग फॉलो ऑल द रूल्स इन से नहीं नहीं देगा आई एल नॉट गिव बिकॉज He is not RTO officer. He is our well-wisher. What we are asking may be bad for us in the future. Today it is desirable, but tomorrow it may harm us. We are not aware, so we are asking. And Krishna knows if I give him today, he will be happy. Tomorrow he will be miserable, so he doesn't give. so when krishna gives that is less mercy when krishna does not give that's more mercy because saying no to you who says no the shopkeeper or the father if you give money to a shopkeeper say cigarette give me cigarette he will give but if your father is a shopkeeper and the son goes cigarette father will give No, he is a shopkeeper. He should give transaction, not mira lelo. He said, "Get out! Give the money back to me." Only those who love can say no. Those who don't love, they want to save their reputation. They can't say no. Say no. If I say no. i'll be a bad person in his life if i say yes i'll be hero in his life so let me say yes only person out of love says no so ras bihari says no you should be very fortunate he said no to me he loves me and too many people he said yes we should not feel envious that i am special to everybody saying yes to me is saying no so that's krishna is a well wisher but demigods they follow the rules so banasur please lord shiva following a rule and lord shiva got pleased so he gave him benedictions a kingdom wealth army weapons and 1000 hands banasu thought wow nobody else in the world has 1000 hands i have i am the most powerful person i can take 500 bows and shoot 500 arrows in one shot and kill 500 people simultaneously nobody can fight with me So he was very happy and grateful. And when Lord Shiva wants to dance, he will play five hundred pavakas with one thousand hands. Nobody can do that. Lord Shiva is in ecstasy. But gradually, Banasur saw nobody is fighting with me. He is not getting to shoot 500 arrows at one time. Nobody is fighting with me. So he getting started getting frustrated. It's like you purchase something from the market on the shelf, but you can't use it. Will you get frustrated? If you have a gulab jamun, so don't eat it. Just keep it in your hand. As few minutes and hours pass by, you'll be frustrated. If there is no gulab jamun, you will be peaceful. If there is gulab jamun, but you are not allowed to eat, you will be frustrated. So Banasura thousand hands, thousand gulab jamuns, thousand hands, but can't eat, can't use. So his frustration was increasing, increasing, increasing. Where to use thousand hands? eating cannot one mouth you cannot use thousand hands to eat chanting you can do 
So he started going and uh, breaking mountains or beating the waves of the ocean, but that will create tsunamis and danger for the city. So he went to Lord Shiva. He said, I want an enemy. I want to fight with somebody. Koi takkar wala chai. Lord Shiva understood. This fellow is too proud and arrogant. Lord Shiva became disgusted with him. And Lord Shiva sent a private encrypted message to Vishnu. You do something about it. If I do, my brand value will go down. I killed my own disciple. You do something. I will cooperate. I will do a drama as if I am helping him, but actually you know, you know, I am never helping him. That's how this fight started. So both Shiva and Vishnu know what is going to be outcome. So Lord Shiva is fighting in the battle with Banasur against against Banasur. He is not against Krishna. That is Krishna's plan to keep Lord Shiva opposite party. So the Lord Shiva's reputation that I protect my devotees doesn't get spoiled. Because if his brand value goes down, then share price goes down. You know, nobody will become devotee. Right? He killed his own devotee. So Lord Krishna protected Lord Shiva's reputation. And they performed their fight and Shiva Jovara got defeated. Lord Shiva saw Banasura is about to be killed because Sudarshan Chakra cut all the hands of Banasura except four. So Lord Shiva went to pray to Krishna to appease him and that's the prayers, beautiful prayers we are reading. And in this prayer he said, you are Purusha, Adi Purush, the original person. I am not Purusha, you are Purusha, you are master. Purusha means enjoyer. We all are Prakriti to be enjoyed by Krishna. We are Krishna's sense objects. And when we give sense gratification to Krishna, that is our service. We are Krishna's sense objects. And all world is also Krishna's sense objects. But if we consider somebody else or something else as our sense object, that's illusion. Because he is the owner. He is enjoyer. We are supposed to enjoy Krishna and sorry, we are supposed to give enjoyment to Krishna. When we give enjoyment to Krishna, he is happy, we are his part and parcel, we become happy. That is a reciprocation. Purusha avatars. There are three Purusha avatars. For the purpose of creation, Mahavishnu. Karno Dakshai Vishnu, Garbo Dakshai Vishnu, Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. Three Purusha avatars, they come in contact with Prakriti. Mahavishnu glances on Prakriti, material nature, and creates the universes as bubbles from the pores of his body. Garbhodakshaya Vishnu enters into each universe and gives birth to Brahma. And Shirodakshaya Vishnu enters into each atom and the heart of the living entity as Purusha, as Paramatma. And Krishna is the original Purusha. He expands into all this Purusha avatars. That's why we pray every day, Shingarati Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. This is Lord Brahma's prayers. Lord Brahma's prayers. 
Lord Brahma, the first living entity, after performing tapasya, before the start of creation, for thousands of years, had darshan of Govind, playing Basuri, and he offered this prayer, your Adi Purush, your original personality of Godhead, your original enjoyer. This creation is for your enjoyment. And the living entities in this creation, if they think they are enjoyers of creation, that's illusion. We are not enjoyers. We can't enjoy. We don't enjoy. We are not enjoying. When we come in contact with sense objects and we feel there is some pleasure, some enjoyment, it is all imagination. It is not real. But delusion is so deep that not only we think it's real, we want to repeat it. So whether you eat something nice or you see something beautiful or you touch something soft, the pleasure and the enjoyment we are getting is unreal. And we think it's real. Like a pig eating stool. Does the pig enjoy? Yes or no? But do you think it's enjoyment? But can you convince the pig, pig about it? So when a pig eats tool, what do we do? We just laugh. It's not enjoyment. Paneer halwa is enjoyment. This is not enjoyment. Right? So when we enjoy Paneer Halwa, Indra laughs. See, this is not enjoyment. Somras and Apsaras are enjoyment. So when Indra enjoys Somras and Apsara, Brahma laughs. See, this is not enjoyment. Pig. And Brahma enjoys Krishna laughs. But it is the pig only. There is no enjoyment. It's a pig life. It's an imagination. It's unreal. It's the original Purusha and one without second. Which means not only he is the original Purusha or not only he is Purusha, nobody else is Purusha. Nobody else is the enjoyer. Nobody else is Supreme Godhead. Krishna is God and nobody else is God. One without second. There is nobody second. No comparison. We can't compare anybody with Krishna. That's offensive. He is one without second. Nobody is equal to him. Nobody is superior to him. Nobody is inferior to him. One without second. Is unique, one and only one. He is not equal to this prakriti. He is not equal to this nature. He is not equal to jivas. He is not equal to demigods. He is not equal to his incarnations, Matsya, Kurma, Vara, Narsinga. Is not equal to his expansions. Is unique. The last few chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, are emphasizing on his uniqueness. So this chapter shows he is not equal to Shiva. Brahma Vimon chapter shows he is not equal to Brahma. Next chapter will show he is not equal to Mahavishnu. 
Even Mahavishnu comes to his conjure to take darshan of Radha Raj Bihari. He is not equal to anybody. Or a better way is nobody is equal to him. Advitya, one without a second, transcendental, is beyond the material nature, beyond the three modes of material nature, beyond the material senses, beyond the material conception, beyond the material thinking, beyond the material logic, beyond the material research, beyond the material knowledge, is beyond. He is not a subject matter to be understood as we understand other subject matters through our senses, through our mind, through our intelligence, through our history, through our memory, through our experience. All methods of understanding and education fails to understand Krishna. Why? Because he is transcendental. All the methods we have to experience and understand cannot reach Krishna. It's transcendental. It looks like it should be possible. I have eyes, so I should be able to see Krishna. I have ears, so I should be able to hear Krishna. I have skin, so I should be able to touch Krishna. I have intelligence, so I should be able to understand Krishna. I have mind, so I should be able to think of Krishna. How can I say mind can think of everything but not Krishna? Eyes can see everything but not Krishna. The capability seems to be possible. But it's not possible. Just like we have a scale. In the school we used to have scale, compass box and scale. For what? Measuring distance. So it should be possible to measure any distance with the scale. For example, from this pillar to this pillar. Is it possible? Yes or no? For example, from Jew to Andheri station. Is it possible? Yes. Sundar Chaitanya says yes, so it has to be yes. Possible. For example, the distance between sun and earth. Possible? Seems to be yes. Same process you have to repeat, but impossible. The tool is there and it just looks like I have to repeat the usage of the tool to arrive at a result. But it's not going to work. So eyes are there and it just seems like I just have to glance and I can experience an object. But it's not possible with Krishna. Why? Because it's transcendental. Adhokscha, beyond our eyes, beyond our senses. Not possible. Beyond the scope, beyond the limit. Transcendental, self-manifesting. Then how can we see you, Lord? If we cannot see you by eyes, if we cannot understand by intelligence, if I cannot use my tools to understand you, then how can I do it? Self-manifesting, swadharg, nothing else outside Krishna is required to see Krishna. Nothing else is required. Like you want to see the sun, what do you need? Torch. Torch. At night, 9 p.m., take a torch, go outside your house, sun, sun, ah, sun. Can you see sun with a the torch? Then, okay, daytime, go outside with a torch, I don't need a torch. Night with a torch, you cannot see sun. Daytime, you don't need a torch to see sun. Right? So, with our eyes, we cannot see Krishna and when it happens, we don't need our eyes. This body, we perform sadhana not to see Krishna, 
but to purify ourselves. Sadhana cannot make us see Krishna or get Krishna Prem. We can't do a single activity by which we can obtain Krishna by this body. Because Krishna is beyond the reach of an activity or multiple activities or repetition of a single activity. He is beyond. He is self-manifesting. He is a sun. When the sun comes, you don't need any other support or a torch or a tube light or a bulb to see Krishna. There was a joke, a master tells servant, just look if sunrise has happened or not. He goes out, comes back, sir, it's dark. Take a torch and look now whether sunrise has happened or not. You don't need anything. Self-manifesting. The sadhana we are doing is purifying ourselves, not to get the sun up. When we don't have a control on sun, which is one eye of Krishna, how can we have control on Krishna to rise in our heart? If at all our sadhana is so powerful that Krishna can rise in our heart, shouldn't our sadhana be powerful also to make sun rise in the night? Because sun is less power, Krishna is higher controller, sun is less, weaker. We can't do anything for the sun to rise in the night, how can we make Krishna to rise in our heart? So it's not by sadhana. Sadhana is there to purify ourselves. Krishna rises in our heart. Krishna's love rises in our heart. Causelessly. By causeless mercy. Not by our effort. Sun rises in the morning by our effort. Causelessly. Causeless mercy. We don't have to do anything for the sun to rise. So we don't have to do anything for Krishna Prem to come in our heart. Nothing. We can't do. Even if we do, it will not result into Krishna Prem. Because Krishna Prem cannot be achieved by effort. Krishna Prem can be received. There is difference between achieve and receive. When we are chanting Hare Krishna and if we are in the mood of performer, we will think I achieved 16 rounds today. It's an achievement. I did it. That's not correct. I received holy name on my tongue. You see the difference? Achievement is centered around me and my effort. Receive is centered around Krishna. So if I think I achieved 16 rounds today, I am in the center, even though I did 16 rounds sitting at one place. I am in the center. We don't achieve holy name. Holy name comes on my tongue, we receive. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much. Enter my ears. The door is open. Like a guest comes on the door. We receive the guest. Come inside, have a seat, take some water. So we receive holy name on our tongue and ears. We don't achieve anything. So Krishna Prem is received in the heart. Causeless mercy of devotees and Krishna. Not by my effort. Then why do we chant and why do we attend Mangal Aarti and I am why are sitting with this class and four regular principles and all this whole day effort? Not for Krishna Prem. This is when the sun rises in the morning, you should not be sleeping. If I am sleeping and the sun rises, did the sun rise for me? No. So when Krishna Prem comes in my heart causelessly, unaware, I am sleeping, I will not receive it. If I am awake, I will receive it. If I am awake, 
sunrise sunrise is not because of my awakeness sunrise will happen on its own if i am awake i will have an experience if i am not awake i will not have an experience so krishna prem will come in our heart on own we don't have to do anything but we have to be awake when it comes and that's why this sadhana for purification not to achieve anything if you are trying to achieve some result through our sadhana or through our service then we are still keeping ourselves in the center not krishna in the center spiritual life is not for achievements or ambitions spiritual life is to stand folded hands knowing i am the most unqualified person but one day i will receive krishna's mercy uh, let me keep my heart open let me keep my hands like this so that i can receive patiently wait till that day well why waiting what to do nothing can be done to make it faster so why waiting what to do jain hari krishna keep crying till the child gets a toy from the father what will the child try to do find a job get money and purchase himself no keep crying keep crying father will be faster he is crying de do so chanting is cry crying crying for mercy so this sadhana is for purifying if i do sadhana or seva or lead kirtan or give class and instead of purification anarthas are increasing then there's something wrong happening something wrong happening i have to revisit i go to doctor i do the test i pay him the fees i get the prescription i purchase the medicine i take the medicine pain increased that something wrong happening cannot continue something wrong happening anarthas are increasing something wrong happening rajogun tamogun is increasing something wrong happening so swadar he self manifesting we don't need an external support we need only krishna and as krishna arranged his parampara so we perform our sadhana with an attitude that we will receive krishna's mercy not with the attitude that my sadhana will make krishna appear i am going to achieve krishna kaun se radha raj bihari 25 years all mangalaarti i did all chanting i did all ekadashi i did all bhagavatam classes i said now you come and no connection there is no connection it is his causeless mercy he gave liberation to putna what connection putna did mangal aarti putna did chanting putna did four regulative principles or ekadashi or bhagavatam classes he just gives but there is no failure in krishna consciousness so it will happen not because of our performance but because he is merciful spiritual progress happens by krishna's mercy and then lord shiva continues you are cause of everything and there nobody your cause now this is interesting like lord brahma says ishwara param krishna sachidanand vikra anadir adir govind sarva karana karan sarva karana karana he is cause of all causes lord shiva says you are cause of everything but you are without cause there is a definition of god sometimes people ask when our preachers preach to them that everything should have a creator this pen should have a creator this table should have a creator and the final creator is god krishna taaliyan bajao not now then the audience asks if everything has a cause krishna should have a cause your logic no the logic doesn't apply why because the definition of god is one who doesn't has a cause one who doesn't has a cause that's a definition definition is considered axiomatic truth 
It doesn't have to follow the same logic. That's the difference. And the proof is Lord Shiva, this verse. He says, everything has a cause, you don't have a cause. Everybody has a father, you don't have a father. If you find a person, he has a father. Find a person, he has a father. Father has a father. Go, 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 go. If you end somewhere, this ka koi baap nahi hai, that's Krishna. But if you argue too much, Krishna will say, Vasudev, Vasudev is my father. Chup bait. So one who is uncaused, cause of all causes, Janmadi Asayataha, one from whom everything emanates, source of everything, not having any source, that Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Shiva is emphasizing here, I am Shiva, I have a source. Narsingha Uttar, he has a source. Mahavishnu, he has a source. Narayana, he has a source. Balram, he has a source. Krishna, nobody. No source. So he is God, Supreme Personality of Godhead, original Supreme Personality of Godhead, no source. If he has a source, how can he be final authority? How can he be Supreme Controller? How can he be Supreme Maintainer? How can he be Supreme Creator? He is a dependent person. He has a source. So he is without source. So somebody who is transcendental, somebody who has no cause, somebody who doesn't fit in our senses, doesn't fit in our mind, doesn't fit in our intelligence, somebody's original Supreme Personality of Godhead, one without a second, seems to be very abstract. How will we relate to him? How will we have an experience with him? As a conditioned soul, we have experience of material nature and material objects. We can't have experience of Krishna, then we are failed, doomed. So Krishna is so merciful, He comes in the material world to give us an experience. As the material nature and material elements and material objects transform, these transformations give out realities of Krishna's presence within them. The earth has fragrance. That's because of Krishna's presence. I am talking, that's because Paramatma is present in the heart. The bird is flying because Krishna's presence. The sun is giving light because of Krishna's presence. So those who perceive Krishna, different people perceive Krishna in different way because they have limited experience and conditioned senses. This Krishna gives an indication, I am there. I am there. So this is Krishna's mercy. He is there as Paramatma in every atom. He is there as an active ingredient of every element. And is there as super soul in the hearts of all living entities. But they don't teach this. But scientists don't teach this because of bewilderment. One great, known as a great scientist, Stephen Hawking, he wrote a very popular book, Brief History of Time. He wrote, if you know all the rules of universe, you will know the mind of God. Almost same. If you know the physical reality, you will understand the indication that God exists. If you know the rules of universe, you will know the mind of God. He wrote in his book. But today he is known as atheist. From talking about God, he became atheist. How? You want to know the secret? Because not a single IYF devotee went to preach him when he was in college. He didn't come in association with devotees. So the seed went away. 
Einstein, Albert Einstein said, God does not play dice. What does it mean? That means the world is not by chance. Dice means by chance. There is a plan behind. So when the person with high intelligence, high IQ, Albert Einstein studied the nature, he came to the conclusion there is somebody intelligent who is planning this. This is not by a chance. So Krishna is present in material nature if somebody applies his intelligence. But today in modern science they don't teach this. It will come one day. But when the syllables comes and you are born as a human and you get into college, then you want to study this? You want to wait for that day? Or we do it now in Bhagavatam class. That is Sarva Karana Karanam. He is present everywhere. They teach it today in chemistry. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with this language. There is an atom and it has a nucleus and there are orbits and there are electrons. S, P, D, F. And one electron jumps from one orbit to another orbit. You all know this? Now jump. The word jump is a verb, V-E-R-B, verb, action. And we all know, dead object cannot perform action. So if an electron jumps from one orbit to another orbit, how can the word jump be applied when electron is dead? It cannot jump on its own. Right? So a better would be, Paramatma sitting in an atom through electron from one orbit to another orbit. It's not jump of an electron, it's thrown by Krishna. This is what science should teach. Because an electron cannot jump. For example, I'm not going to do that, but suppose I take this mic and throw it. And you are going to discuss this event with a friend who is not here. What you will say, you know today what happened in Bhagavatam class, the mic jumped. Say, so, wow, I heard electron jumps, now mic also jumps. No, you are going to say, you know today what I'm Bhagavatam class, that Prabhuji threw the mic. Which, which you would say, common sense? Threw, right? Not jump. So common sense, electron cannot jump. So then what happened? Somebody threw. Who is that somebody? That's Krishna. That's perfect chemistry class. That's perfect education. But there are fools who are teaching. So this preaching is very important to modern atheistic science. That Krishna is present in every atom. And that's why the atom is working and that's why these movements are happening. And that's why the jumps are happening, whatever is happening. This also is made of electrons only. Now why it's not jumping? Object cannot jump. So Krishna is present in every atom, every living entity's heart, all pervading Vasudevam Sarvamiti. And one who understands that is Mahatma, Samatma, Sudurlava. So we come to Iskon to become a Mahatma, Mahanatma. If you want to become Mahanatma, come to Iskon. If you want to become Lahanatma, Go to IIT Pawai. Want to become Ghan Atma? Okay, leave it. So we come to Iskon to become a Mahatma, to become a great soul. Srila Prabhupada has given this an opportunity that we become great souls or we become servant of great soul. That's perfection of life. Others become animals next life. What is the use? So repeatedly in Bhagavatam this is mentioned, Krishna is everywhere, all pervading and we can access Him. Just like Wi-Fi signal is, or radio signal is all over the temple hall, but to access Him you need a device or a password. So we can access that. The device is His body and the password is the holy name. When we chant every day, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. We connect to Krishna because the password is equal to Wi-Fi. Holy name is equal to Krishna. 
So this holy name descends on our tongue for a sincere soul and goes into our ear and makes transformation in the heart. That's attentive chanting. So we chant and hear minimum 16 rounds every day. And that's how we access Krishna's mercy, which is everywhere, all pervading. Okay? We end here. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Hare Krishna. If there are any comments or questions? Ha, ah, Krishna Murari Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Annat Bhavanti Bhutani. Lord gave cow to grass. Our wash they give share to meat. Like they give pig to stool. What is the big thing? But man eat is the stool, then we can say something. Right. Thank you. Next question. Where's the mic, Sundar Chaitanya? Oh, you have a mic? Okay. Okay, Janu Prabhu, go ahead. Hare Krishna. Thank Hare you very much. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, this uh, example I understood about the pig eating stool and human beings have higher things. So, one kind of conception goes around is that nothing is absolute in this world. Everything is uh, uh, perception based and and that then it, it becomes like a how we establish that there is something which is beyond perception and absolute. Because everybody feels that everybody should enjoy whatever they like. I like karela, other may not like, I can't force. So similarly, somebody is eating karela, he can be happy, I may not be happy. So similarly, I may not be happy eating stool, but pig is happy, why you are telling that he is not happy? So then it becomes like a uh, fully based on person to person, very subjective. So there is no objective understanding of reality. It will be a little long answer. Are we okay? So, the experience of pleasure, when we come in contact with a sense object, is not based on sense object. You are making difference between karela and rasgulla or stool and paneer. You are making a difference because there is bheda between the sense objects. But the experience is not because of the bheda and my perception. The experience is illusory because of the process. For example, if a human takes a gulab jamun, puts it on the tongue, as soon as there is a sense contact, tongue comes in contact with gulab jamun, there is an experience of happiness. Right? Even I am talking, there is an experience of happiness. As soon as the gulab jamun touches the tongue, there is an experience of happiness. So from where this happiness came, from Gulab Jamun, then you should be happy with the, right? If it is not from Gulab Jamun, then you should be happy without Gulab Jamun. But you are not. So it should have come from Gulab Jamun. Anybody knows how to make a Gulab Jamun here? Raise your hand. What are the ingredients you put? Elaiji. Fire. So when Adhokcha Krishna Prabhu makes gulab jamun, he puts suji, khoya, elaiji, sugar, water, fire. So a ball made out of these ingredients goes on your tongue. So what goes on your tongue is a combination of suji, khoya, elaiji, water, fire, sugar. Right? Do you put happiness also? No. So happiness didn't go on your tongue. Right? Suji went, khoya went, water went, sugar went, fire went, whatever. Elaiji went, 
happiness didn't go on your tongue, but still you got happiness. That means happiness didn't come from gulab jamun. From where did it come? What is the source of happiness? It's imagination, because there's a desire in the heart to eat gulab jamun. And when the desire got fulfilled, you feel happy. Same way, when we go to office, there's a task list, one, two, three, four, seven tasks. One task, very great austerity, you do, no happiness. But when you tick, you feel happy. Why you feel happy? Because you did the task or because the task got completed? What? Because the task got completed. So when you tick, you feel happy. So there's a the task or a desire in our list of desires, eat gulab jamun. And when it goes on your tongue, tick. And as soon as you tick, you feel happy, desire fulfilled. The happiness is not because of gulab jamun, not because of karela, not because of stool. It is because of tick, checklist. You are with me, Sudhachatra? And the interesting part is, as soon as you tick, eat gulab jamun, dynamically another list, another entry made is made in the list, eat one more gulab jamun. So you take the second one, tick, happiness. And dynamically third entry, eat one more gulab jam, third one. Again you eat the third one, tick, happiness. Tenth one, tick, happiness. After tenth, there is no new entry. Now if your friend puts a gulab jam on eleventh one in your mouth, there will be a fight. You both will fight, why did you put I don't want? Bhaag idhar se. Because there is no entry, so there is no tick mark, so you don't want. After three hours, Again, the entry will come. Now you can eat one gulab jamun. Now you eat, you will be happy. So the happiness is because of desire fulfilled, not because of sense object. When boys play football, they have a net and they have a ball and they have a list. And in the list, there is an entry. The entry says, if I kick the ball in this net, I will be happy. And for hours together they try to do that. And if a boy kicks the ball in the net and it goes inside the net, check mark, and he becomes happy. Who in the world gets any tangible benefit by kicking a ball in a particular location? Nobody. But they are running, running, running. Why? Because there is a list and there is an entry. Same boy with the same entry kicks the ball and it goes one centimeter out of the net, he is not happy. Why? You kicked the ball, it went. No, it didn't went inside the net. There is no entry here which says one centimeter outside half goal. Doesn't say that. So there is no. Suppose tomorrow the rule changes and they say if it goes one centimeter outside, you get half goal. Then the entry will be added and then he will be happy. Aadha to mila. So it's all entry. It's all entry in the list. And they all are fighting for it. But actually no tangible benefit, neither in the ball, or kicking a ball in the net, or eating gulab jam. There is no tangible benefit, or purchasing a car. It's all entry. Are make a bigger net. There will be more kicking the ball, more probability of getting happiness. Or give, purchase 20 balls, give one one to everybody, keep Kicking, no, they will not be happy because there is no such entry. Right? If we announce tomorrow, the first person coming to Mangalar, coming to temple hall at 3 a.m., will get 1 lakh rupees. Many of us will get an entry and tomorrow we will try. Right? There is no such announcement, so we are not going to try because there is no such entry or his name will be put on the notice board. So the entry will be there and the check mark will happen, he will be happy. What is the great thing putting a name on the notice board? Because the entry is there, check mark is there. And in life, how many desires we have, unlimited, millions, how many are going to check mark? Very less probab, very less number. Most are going to be unchecked marked. Right? So unfulfilled desires give distress, fulfilled desires give happiness, 
very less gets fulfilled, mostly get unfulfilled. That's why Dukhalaya Mashashvatam, the world is full of miseries. Because not check. If all the list is zero, no desire, you will be hundred percent happy. That's Anya Abhilashita Shunyam, no other desire. That's a pure devotee of Krishna. He can see Krishna directly in his heart. Anya Abhilashita Shunyam. Till you have Abhilash, this happiness, distress will continue. So happiness seems to be because of perception, but actually it's because of this desires. If you take a uh, uh, pink sari and give to a boy, gift for you, he will not be happy. Give to a girl, she may be happy. Why? Because they have a different list of desires. So if you take paneer to a pig, he will not be happy because it doesn't contain in his desire list. And if you give a stool to a human, he will not be happy. Not because he dislike it. That's outside perception, because there is no such list. If the government announces, whenever who, any person who eats stool will get one crore rupees, uh, tomorrow people will eat stool, because the desire will be there. The entry will be there. And they will be happy about it, because so the entry will be there. Like Olympics, they announce, if you run this meters in this seconds, you will get a cup. So everybody is trying. If the announcement is cancelled, nobody will run. Entry will not be there. So it's all this entry business. Please don't enter into entry business. Just serve Krishna. Okay? That's my answer. Next question. Sharad. Can I have water? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you very much for the very wonderful class. <laughs> sorry, come back. Thank you very much for the very oh, wonderful sorry. class. Hare so, you gave a very amazing example of the demigods compared to the RTO officer. And Krishna is a parent, will not give the cigarette to the child. Uh, my question is that, uh, so, and that's the reason why you were mentioning that Krishna will not give anything to his devotee unless he knows that he is going to make a good use of it in the future. Will be beneficial for him or not? Uh, well, Krishna has given us the free will and uh, Krishna did knew also that we are going to misuse it and go against him in the first time and that's how we are here now in trouble. And uh, so I mean how the person is going to use a commodity or any asset or anything that maybe Krishna may not exactly know because that free will is given to us, the living entity. So, it's very difficult to understand, I mean, so what to speak of us who are not, uh, who are conditioned, I mean. And so, in the in the beginning also Krishna gave the free will, so we, we, we misused. And later on also, you know, even after becoming purified, apichet sudurachara bhajate ma mananya bhag, you know, even at a purified stage, one may commit still a durachara activity. So, I mean, how how to understand that Krishna is not an RTO officer? Because it's very difficult to understand, like, as per my, this thing is, can you explain? Well, Krishna gave us free will because he wants Sharad, he doesn't want stone. Because stones can't love. And Krishna wants love. Krishna wants love. And he can get love only from living entities who have free will. Love is based on free will. Love cannot be forced. Love is by choice. That's why we have, I have choices. So Krishna gave us free will hoping I will get love. We misuse free will, Krishna still has hope. Maybe he will reform and give me love. We again misuse. Krishna again has hope that he will reform and I will get love. Millions and millions of years, Krishna is waiting in your heart, Sharad, one day he will love me. One day he will love me. And he can't force that love out. I can't take a guess, Sharad, love me. You can't say, 
यू मे से आई लव यू बट मन में क्या चलेगा गन जाने दो देखता हूं मैं लेट द गन गो अवे लव के नॉट बी फोर्स्ड लव इज बाय चॉइस लव इज बाय फ्री विल सो कृष्णा गेव अस फ्री विल सो दैट वी कैन लव हिम एंड ही सो पेशेंट वी आर मल्टीपल टाइम्स यूज मिस यूज अवर फ्री विल नॉट टू लव हिम बट इज वेटिंग हम होंगे कामयाब एक दिन इज वेटिंग वन डे दिस सोल विल टर्न टूवर्ड्स मी एंड से आई लव यू एंड लव मी Since millions of years, he is waiting. So that's Krishna who wants our love. So we should give him that love. Enough. How many long we will make him wait? Even to a dear friend, we not we don't like to wait for one hour, two hour. This is Krishna whom we are making wait for millions of years. So Krishna wants our love. So he throws us flower and mango and Lakshmi. He says, at least using these objects, he will give me love. You take a mango or a flower or a leaf and give love to Radha Ras. Very attached to that item, Krishna is pleased. Chalo, itna to kia. Patram pushpam phalam toyam. Give me with love water. I am giving you rain. Just catch some water and give me. But add your love. I will accept it. Ashnami, I will be satisfied. Just take a fruit. Just take a leaf from a tree and. give me with love i will accept it i am standing here water i have provided leaf i have provided what you have to do just add your love to it and that is by free will a stone cannot do that so in spite of repeated failures krishna is having hope that this person will love me one day so he is waiting but we don't listen so he jumps out as guru as acharya as shastra as devotees as sadhu and they come and tell me go back go back to krishna love him love him chant hare krishna pay obeisances honor prasadam that's preaching to send the soul back to parmatma love him use your free will to love krishna stop misusing free will stop sinful activities stop fruitive activities stop mental speculation just engage in krishna service so krishna has given us free will actually he has not given we have free will already eternally but he is having hope he is having hope that one day this person will turn towards me one day he will come back to golok vrindavan and i'll be waiting at the gate with tears in my eyes and i'll embrace that soul and say where were you sharad all these days what were you doing in bombay come to golok vrindavan let's have laddu kachori and do masti He is waiting for us, and my dear devotees, it's enough. Don't make him wait more. Not good. Be determined. This life, last life. We go back to Krishna. No more birth in this material world. So free will is the only way we can love Krishna. So he keeps giving opportunities. That is his compassion. That is his mercy. That is his love. When a father gives a box of sweets. to the daughter gudiya she opens the box sweets very happy she takes first sweet say papa first one you eat the father will be so happy why he will be happy because he got sweet no he can purchase 10 boxes he will be happy because he got the first one and first one means love he will be so happy next day he will bring one more box because he knows again first one i will get i'll get love of my gudiya so that what krishna is doing every day giving you rice every day giving you um, sabji every day giving you money thinking that first one he'll give me and i'll get love of my devotee but when we don't do that krishna cries but then he says maybe tomorrow i'll give him one box maybe tomorrow he'll give me so again next day he gives us one day we have to wake up let me give my life to krishna he has given me so that i can give him that is the purpose of creation so whatever he has given us with a hope that we will give him first it belongs to him only but he has given us with a hope the hope that i'll get love of my gudiya i'll get love of my devotee i'll get love of the jeeva 
this whole creation, every single earth, water, fire, air, ether, rain, sunshine, everything He has given us so that we offer Him. So that He can pick up our love from that item. Like email has an attachment, a file cannot be sent otherwise. Love cannot be given to Krishna in the material world without objects. We have to take an object, attach our love, give to Krishna. Krishna is not interested in the object, He will take the attachment. He will take love. So He wants that love and He knows the easiest way is to attach it to an object, so He gives us objects. It includes free will. So we should give it back to Krishna. Okay? So then that means Krishna is also like in one sense an RTO officer we can call because even Krishna doesn't know in that sense how we are going to utilize that free will, whether we are going to misuse it or how. No, he knows. Huh. He's giving chance. Yeah. He's a father who is giving many chances. Another question was a small just in So RTO officer is one who has to follow rules. Krishna doesn't follow rules. Krishna follows his sweet will. Like we have free will, he has sweet will. He follows his sweet will. Yeah, I don't know whether I can take a... Okay, okay, go ahead since you have a yes, mic. Uh, you're talking about uh, the electron jumping. So, I just wanted to uh, you know, add here or whatever. So, there the mention is about the excitation energy also. So, the electron will not jump automatically. So, modern science says that you have to apply some pressure, some external force has to be applied. So, maybe we can utilize this in Krishna consciousness also that our efforts and then Paramatma will do his part then. Because if we don't heat the, you know, the atom, the molecule, it will not jump automatically. So, so that's Newton's first law. Without external imbalance force, no motion can happen. The electron cannot have a motion without heat. And But somebody has to apply that force, that's Krishna. A force cannot be done without a source. Energy cannot be there without energetic. Shakti cannot be there without Shakti Man. Cause has to be there of the force. So if the jumping is because of heat or the energy, there has to be a source behind that. Finally, it's Fire. Fire ka source is sun. Sun ka source is Krishna. Is eye of Krishna. So wherever logic you apply, you will reach Krishna. Because he is everywhere. You can't escape him and explain something. Some phenomena you cannot explain in this world without Krishna. If you are successful, it's a foolishness. Is that okay? Next question. We'll take questions first, Hanuman Prabhu. We'll take questions first. Yeah, Janudip had a question. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. So, as you were explaining that Krishna wants love, I mean, He is love and all the living beings, all the souls, we are also connected to Him in a loving relationship. So, we, under, we read uh, from Bhagavatam, as Acharya has explained, that there are different categories of souls, there are some Nitya Siddhas and like us Nitya Badhas. So when I was reading this uh, eighth chapter of tenth canto, in one of the purport text 46, Prabhupada explains that Nand Maharaj, Yashodamaya and eternal associates of Krishna, they are expansion of his own body. They are not like us. So I understand from this that there are two categories of souls, one who are directly expansion of Ladani potency, and then souls like us who are not put expansions of Aladhani potency, what we are called as Tatastha Shakti. So if Aladhani potency who are Nitya Siddha, they never, never come here or they always are with Krishna and Krishna is getting love from them. What is the... Of course, there is an argument that can be said, you can't say God cannot have this. So he has to have everything, so marginal potency is also one of his energy. But then the fact is that only marginal potency misuses its free will and then Krishna has to make so many arrangements. If Nitya Siddhas are giving him complete pleasure or they are always loving him, they are not falling down, then what's the use of marginal potency? What is the use in terms of creation? What is the use of now reclaiming? Like to understand that there exists a potency called marginal potency which is actually giving trouble to God. He has to manage everything. Okay. Well, uh, there is no reason of existence of marginal potency. They are always with Krishna. Krishna did not create souls. 
it's a misconception krishna is the supreme creator yes krishna is source of souls yes krishna created souls no krishna did not create souls krishna and when i say krishna it includes absolute truth it includes soul krishna means souls are included that makes it complete complete whole the souls are not there it's not complete vibhinamsha and swamsha both has to be there any concept which is possible to think and talk about should be part of krishna otherwise is incomplete right so krishna is god he has to be complete so he should have everything so marginal potency is a concept which is possible when uh, nitya siddhas are possible then those who are not nitya siddha should be possible otherwise is not complete complete means if you have a you should have minus a you should have all the options available so marginal potencies is also possible so they are always with krishna those who misuse their free will and suffer here in mumbai krishna cries for them and he wants them back that is why this all arrangement is there this is burden of love he is not troubled he is troubled because he sees us in pain but is not trouble to reclaim us when our child is in distress we are in trouble but when we take him to the hospital we are not troubled because we are hoping that he will become okay and play again so this is krishna's love that is reclaiming us he has pain because we have pain but when he tries to help us uh, he is not troubled so existence is anyway there Uh, that makes it complete otherwise krishna is incomplete and reclamation is there that's not trouble that is his joy that is getting our soul back is that okay janu deep bro thank you bro i'm trying to phrase a question but it was very difficult so i just want to sundar chitra bro ask this uh, objective reality people have a subjective experiences based on their experience so i just want to cross check my understanding whether it's right or not so the objective experience we get only when we cultivate our desire towards a uh, krishna am i right okay. using the opportunities is it complete your question is that the only question yeah, my question i just want to cross check whether my understanding is right or not when you are defining objective reality to sundar chetan prabhu's question there i felt it was not completely answered you explained uh, we should cultivate our desire towards krishna then our experiences in this world will get connected to krishna then we can experience that objective reality is it correct well what i mentioned is that the happiness we have because of perception and sundar jitendra who said there is comparative happiness one person say this is happy. i am happy this is my perception i am happy that's not true happiness is imaginary happiness is not an objective reality it is a experience based on desire and objective reality as krishna created as absolute truth created this world is only possible when our desire plane is zero when there are no desires then only you come in contact with actual reality till that we'll be coming in contact with illusion till that we'll see the world with colored eyes with the eyes of my desires so that's true when our desires are completely finished zero only desire to serve krishna we can come in contact with real creation real world otherwise we'll come in contact with our desires and our world view our perception which is illusory which is not real so we have to become Uh, none material desires has to be completely given yes, up yes. given up or has to be become empty sorry you mean to say that all material desires yes. has to become zero to have experience of real world okay. how uh, the concept comes doubtailing the desires doubtailing is desire to help us to give up the desire we cannot give up the desire on the first day we heard this so gradually we have to give up for example a new boy come he says i want to practice bhakti but i can't live without samosas so what you will say give up samosa you will say first chant around then eat samosa 
that is called delaying desire delay after a few months he says look don't eat outside samosa you chant your rounds cook a samosa offer to krishna and then eat that's called dovetailing from delay you go to dovetail then after a few years of bhakti he said don't do it every day don't be samosa conscious international society for samosa conscious diminish do it once a month from delay we get to dovetail eating daily outside to eating self cooking and offering then we go to diminish once a week once a month then one day we we'll say forget the samosa just chant hari krishna whatever krishna gives you be satisfied that's called destroy destroy the desire four d's delay dovetail diminish destroy so dovetail is second stage if you first day say mandir aane ka no samosa it stop coming only but that's the goal no material desire right but we cannot do that first day so dovetail is maximum devotees practicing on our regular platform delay dovetail diminish destroy and don't ask me reference for this it's from golok brind <laughs> this from golok golok brindavan not from books okay Th- thank you uh, this uh, initially i had this question so we uh, were discussing about mercy that we cannot uh, ax uh, we cannot uh, you used the word so how to say that we cannot the we cannot chant hare krishna ma mantra because i can chant hare krishna ma achieve achieve yeah so we cannot achieve chanting hare krishna ma mantra so uh, in this context i i want to cross check once again mercy means opportunities given by acharyas and krishna to us is it correct mercy means there's one way so we, we have discussed lot about mercy so is it or anything else you want from this class mercy mercy you want a definition from yeah you want a scientific definition from the if there is a event whose probability is almost zero and still it happens and give you spiritual growth that is called mercy thank you yes <laughs> thank you thank you very much for us hanuman bro हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा पितामह भीष्म बताया है अपना पूर्ण स्नेह किसी एक व्यक्ति पर आरोपित करना यह प्रेम है हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू एंड आई लाइक टू वेलकम हिज ग्रेस व्रजन नंदन प्रभु आई जस्ट सॉ हिम यू अराइव टुडे ही जस्ट अराइव सो वी ऑन बी ऑफ ऑफ राधा राजन मंदिर वेलकम हिज ग्रेस व्रजन नंदन प्रभु हरे कृष्णा Thank you very much Shila Prabhupada ki jai Hare Krishna